Yeah, it's my pleasure today to uh, bring to the club Ivani Dilger, who's a therapist and founder and director of the Natural Highs, uh, as well as uh, three and maybe four members of her team of incredible peer mentors who will uh, introduce themselves uh, uh, as uh, Ivani introduces them. Now, our Behavioral Wellness Committee was introduced to Natural Highs by our committee champion for the project, uh, Norma Portnoy. And when she and uh, Hans heard uh, Avani speak to the Parent Effectiveness Network, who endorses the program along with the Boulder Valley School District, Mental Health Partners, and the Boulder County Health Department. Uh, and in fact, the city of Boulder actually has been providing funding for natural highs, but just for the academic calendar year. And now that funding could be in jeopardy uh, because of the loss of tax revenues from the city's uh, COVID-19 uh, experience. Uh, so thank you so much for having us today as guests. Uh, we feel so honored uh, because we have been working in this community for 16 years and uh, we see ourselves as a community uh, nonprofit and a movement that we want everybody to know about and everybody to participate in however way you would like to. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for us to tell you about Natural Highs if you haven't heard about us. And so I would like to pass it on to Dee, who will give you a little bit of an introduction of who she is and what she is doing in Natural Highs. Hi, I'm Dee. Um, so I have been with Natural Highs for about three years now. I just graduated New Vista High School. It's my senior year. Um, oh, there I am. Okay, so yeah, I've been with the peer mentor. I've been a peer mentor with Natural Highs for forever. What being a peer mentor is is just basically taking on a leadership role, uh, helping with brain chemistry, presenting, planning events, facilitating, all that good stuff. And it also is a commitment to being 100% sober. So I have been in that role for around three years now, since October 2017. Uh, so yeah, I've always been a peer mentor with Natural Highs. Basically, the second I met Natural Highs, I was super enamored with it. I had transferred to New Vista my sophomore year after Broomfield High didn't like quite work out for me. Um, just was kind of going down a wrong path with some friends that made some questionable choices and I was making questionable choices with them um, regarding drugs, but also regarding a lot of things that weren't good for me. Uh, so when I found Natural Highs, it was really a welcoming, loving, supportive community. I took on a unique approach, just super non-judgmental and just wanting to support everyone. And I also learned about herbalism and brain chemistry, which made the adjustment to like wanting to take care, better care of myself so much easier and so much more fun is a really good way to put it. And so yeah, I just immediately fell in love with the program, immediately became a peer mentor, and just really wanted to help people like over um, how much I wanted to destroy myself, if that made sense. Um, so it's just been a really amazing leadership role for me, and I've been super into the program for forever, and yeah. Um, the main thing that I do is, well, as I was saying, I help plan events and also like help make sure that they're going well. Um, I like facilitate classes in general. Sometimes I'll teach brain chemistry because I have basically all the classes memorized and I teach them on my own time in a different program. Uh, yeah, it's just a really great, great nonprofit and I'm super lucky and grateful to be a part of it. Uh, thank you so much, Dee, for sharing that. And I also want to add that, uh, you know, uh, Dee has been a rock star peer mentor for Natural Highs and has been hired by Boulder County to be a leader, to function in a leadership role, and has also been hired by another substance abuse program to actually teach natural highs in their program. So I just wanna say that, that you are a super rock star peer mentor, and I'm so glad you could be here today and talk about that. Thank you, Bonnie, so Thank sweet. You. Yeah. So uh, I wanna welcome uh, the next peer mentor who is Holly. Uh, who also can share about what she does with Natural Highs. Hi, um, my name is Holly. I know it says Suzanne on there, but that's my mom's name, so sorry about that. Um, I found out about Natural Highs because of um, my diversion officer, and it was originally a court-mandated requirement 
Um, and at first I was really hesitant to join the program because I didn't know what it was going to be like. Um, but after the first day, I couldn't believe that I had gone my entire life without it. Um, I was immediately put into a leadership position, like on my first day being there. <clears throat> um, as a peer mentor, Dean mentioned that you have to vow to be sober. So from that day on, um, I have been sober ever since. And taking on that kind of position gave me so much confidence in myself and the path that I want to take in my life. Um, I was in an extremely dark place coming into that program. Like I was really suffering from my addiction and other mental illness disorders. Um, and I just really didn't see any hope. Like everything was kind of looking down. I didn't really have any direction in life and it was everything was just really unfulfilling. But as soon as I was in that um, support system and place like natural highs, I just started to like regain my confidence in myself and figure out like what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. Um, and I can honestly say that that program has given me my life back. Um, I've completely found myself through natural highs and it just has given me so much clarity for who I want to be and what I want to do. Um, like this semester, I, or I took a year off school because I really wanted to get my life back on track. Um, and coming back into school, I decided to switch my major into psychology because I know that in my future, I wanted to be doing something like Avani and Natural Highs does for other people. And, you know, every day is still a challenge, but having a support system like Natural Highs just makes it that much easier to like go day by day. Um, and I can proudly say that tomorrow I'm nine months sober, thanks to the natural highs. I seriously never would have in a million years thought that I could have achieved that. And it blows my mind even just thinking about. So yeah, and like Dee was saying, we've been taught about like neuroscience and um, just been given like so much education around why we do the things that we do and knowing that we're not flawed and that we're still human beings and that we make mistakes, but that isn't the end all. Um, and yeah, I've had amazing opportunities to go into middle schools and teach them about prevention before they even become exposed to substance abuse and also um, like be there for adults and show them that no one's beyond repair. And it's just been, it's been beautiful for me to be a part of. And yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. So I want to just add that uh, Holly uh, has been absolutely amazing on the team. So we believe in Natural Highs that, you know, everybody is uh, an expert in wherever place they are. And there's a place uh, for teaching something about that life experience. And Holly, you have been doing this in such an amazing way from the, from the start, coming from such a difficult uh, situation and turning that around so fast. And I'm teaching right now a class, a natural highs class for the Boulder Probation Department, where we work with women who have really come through the most horrendous trauma and uh, involvement in the justice system. And Holly is uh, with me on the team uh, teaching natural highs and alternatives to uh, people from really hard backgrounds. So I just want to thank you, Holly, for being such a rock star peer mentor. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah. So I want to welcome Kara, who is also on the Natural Highs team and has also a beautiful, unique story and a unique vision that I would love for her to tell you about. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kara, and uh, I'm from northern Canada in a community called Iqaluit Nunavut, um, which is on Baffin Island. Um, in the Arctic. And I moved there when I was about 11 years old. It is um, a place that experiences a lot of federal neglect. So our, our um, housing prices and food prices are much higher. So we have very high poverty levels. And because of that, there's a lot of um, addiction and mental health issues. And I started to get into drugs at a really young age. And um, I just graduated in Europa University this May. And um, I found natural highs of, uh, last semester, so in the fall, and it was with their adult program for one semester, which was the first step for me to really um, take the leap into being sober, something that I had been wanting to do for a really long time, but I had just never really had the support. And um, after being in the Natural Highs adult course, I then asked Ivani to be um, an internship student 
with Natural High. So I was able to work as a practicum student for the last semester and I've actually created um, a curriculum that is based somewhat off of the curriculum that Avani has developed um, to bring to Iqaluit Nunavut and work with youth at risk um, in my home and I'm going to be integrating rock climbing with all of the different kind of brain chemistry education that we learn as well as um, different self-care techniques and whatnot. So I've been really grateful to find natural highs. I think that a really big component of what makes us different and accessible for youth is um, the shame-free component and um, the open sharing, but also the intergenerational component of um, youth and young adults and adults and elders being in the same space and sharing experiences. And I think that's such a natural part of our human experience, but it's missing in a lot of communities today. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for being here, letting, uh, inviting us today. It's so great to be here with you. Thank you so much, Kara. Uh, for being here and you know this is very exciting to us to gonna that we're gonna have a pilot site all the way up in the arctic uh, because for those of you who know what's going on there uh, it's a really challenging environment for ki for kids to grow up in and uh, so for you to bring natural highs there is just one of the most beautiful things so thank you for that so I would like to tell you a little bit about how we started this program and how we started this movement uh, so that you understand why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, so I uh, grew up in Germany, in Bavaria, and when I was a young person, two of my friends died in connection with their drug use. And for me, as a young person, that was a very, very difficult experience. Uh, because I felt that we were not supported by adults at all. Uh, we had no resources, and that was still a time with a lot of stigma around addiction and mental health issues. And so, you know, my friends were considered addicts and junkies, and there was really no support for us to understand uh, what was going on. And so I was left kind of uh, really upset and at that moment I committed that I would figure this out that I would spend the rest of my life uh, figuring out like how can we solve this how can we understand what are these forces of addiction and why do they make people become so destructive sometimes that it costs people's lives and so uh, I started studying you know whatever I could um, this quest also then brought me to the US uh, because I received a grant from the German government to study with pioneers in somatic psychology who are uh, here in Boulder. And so I was lucky to study with Christine Caldwell and with Susan Potion. Um, and so I learned about um, neuroscience approaches to addiction, about somatic psychology, so a much more science-based way of understanding what's actually going on. Um, I then very quickly became, became involved in traditional treatment settings. So I worked here in the Boulder County Jail. I worked here for Boulder County uh, Public Health. And I saw that oftentimes the traditional approaches are not uh, producing very good outcomes. Uh, so I worked with a lot of people on the very extreme end of the spectrum and um, could just see that we were not helping people get better. And um, in my total despair about that, I started interviewing people. I started asking people, so what are the elements that would actually make, uh, you know, help you get motivated to even consider choosing a healthy lifestyle, a clean and sober lifestyle? And the pieces that we learned were very unusual, actually. So, for example, we learned that the most motivating and empowering piece for people to actually motivate them towards staying clean and sober is learning about the neuroscience of what substances actually do in the brain. Now, that is n not usually the biggest part in uh, drug treatment centers, and so, but it's the biggest part in natural highs. So we teach a lot of very advanced brain chemistry because we learned that when people learn about what's actually going on, that they want to make better choices. And uh, we also learned that people need to be respected in their autonomy. 
Uh, so people need to, to learn that they actually need to decide for themselves and that in that uh, space of non-judgment and non-pressure, people end up making better choices for you. So I know that uh, Dee and Holly and Kara talked a little bit about elements of the program. So I want to give you a little overview over the different pieces that we do. So I want to share my screen with you so that you can uh, have a little view into our program. So let me just pull this up here, make sure I can show you some of our, okay. All right, so these are just a few pictures of the different things uh, we do. Let me just see if I can make this big screen. Okay, so um, so welcome to Natural High. So this is a view into one of our classes. Uh, so our classes look a little bit different. We meet in circles and uh, we work with a ritual that comes from South America called sharing yerba mate. It is a social ritual when people get together they share uh, a tea uh, that is actually highly nutritious and it comes with the social ritual. You see the circle of gourds. Um, it's a very similar social ritual what people do here with sometimes with more unhealthy substances like alcohol or marijuana. And we learned that it's very hard for humans to give up social rituals, that it's much easier to stay clean and sober if you have other options of connecting. And so we use this beautiful ritual from South America for that purpose. And so you see it here in the middle. Uh, so this is a circle of gourds. And so our classes look different from a normal, normal drug program. They're very celebratory. They're fun and we do fun things. And so because of that, they're very popular. And um, we also uh, always teach classes as a team. So we invite everybody to be part of a team and become part of teaching. And we invite young people to bring in their favorite topics. So you see here on this picture is actually Callie who brought the whole love languages piece into our curriculum. Uh, here you see Erica teaching neuroscience. Um, this is another example of a class that was actually taught as, at a music festival where Rebecca, who you see here in the picture, she taught classes as, and was one of the youngest uh, facilitators in that festival ever in the history of that festival, uh, teaching at age 19. Uh, so we work in high schools, we work in middle schools, we also offer a free after school program. Uh, we try to reduce all the barriers. So all, most of our programs are free uh, so that there's no obstacles uh, for obstacle for people to participate. Uh, again, right, everybody is encouraged to be a leader. Everybody is encouraged to step up. Uh, we do a lot of different body mind practices because we want people when they come to class to, with us, we want them to leave tangibly feeling better. So we teach a lot of stress management skills, um, mindfulness practices, uh, healthy ways of connecting. Uh, so we look at every substance that people abuse and we look at what is the intelligence, what is, what is the, uh, the desire underneath that people are actually trying to get to. And we teach those direct uh, practices. So we work with art, of course, uh, this is a piece of artwork uh, one of our students did. We also do a lot of work in the community. So we get invited uh, often to community festivals. Uh, this is at the Pride Fest. Uh, we give out uh, free yerba mate. We teach people about healthy alternatives to drugs and alcohol. Uh, and our peer mentors are critical. Uh, they are the leaders in bringing that information to people. Um, so teens are on our team and deciding what we actually do. And because of that, our program is very popular because teens decide what we want to offer. And so we offer really beautiful events, sober events like uh, open mics, uh, music events, 
uh, we do sober raves, sober dance parties. Because we want to show that it doesn't mean if you stay clean and sober, you can have even more fun and you can learn it uh, to do it in healthy ways. So we actually have a lot of experience doing our work outside, which is really a benefit, of course, for this summer. Uh, because we, of course, we don't know with, with COVID-19 what's going to happen, but we are very, very, uh, you know, flexible and we have brought our work outside into circles. So we are happy to, you know, stay flexible and see if we can bring our work gently and carefully outside. So this is a, a workshop we did in a festival outside. Okay, so um, yeah, just wanted to give you a little bit of an inside view and then I want to show you a little bit more voices of teens who couldn't be here today. So we have a very, very short video that gives you a little bit of an inside view of how we work. The Natural Heist program is a community built off the youth leaders and the youth who participate in it. Brain chemistry is sort of the foundation of Natural Highs. We talk about feelings, <laughs> Natural Highs, and habits and rituals. So we hear a lot from kids who participate in our programs that they have never received any of this information, you know, not in schools, not in any other programs. Uh, and certainly not in drug prevention programs. And so we'd like to bring the information that we think would make a difference to people at the age where they need it the most. I think a lot of people would quit drugs if they knew what Natural Highs taught. Um, I think a big part of that is that Natural Highs teaches you how to feel good on your own without the use of substance. And I feel that once people know that, they make the switch. Okay, so, um, I would like to tell you a little bit about COVID-19 uh, because really the, the focus of this meeting today uh, was really to show you all what we're doing during COVID-19 and how you can all participate in that or how you can all um, think of people in your lives who might need support right now. So. Um, so when, when COVID-19 hit, um, you know, for us working with people who are vulnerable with mental health issues and with substance abuse issues, uh, we were very clear from the start that this would be a very difficult time. Uh, if you add another factor uh, for people who are already challenged, um, it can make people's life very, very hard. And so very quickly, we decided to do anything in our capacity to uh, provide uh, resources for people who are uh, impacted and are struggling. So, um, so I want to show you, uh, and I, I just saw somebody in the chat, right? Where is the intergenerational aspect? So you could see that we do a lot of our work for teens. But we also know that one of the pieces that are missing in our world right now is really the intergenerational aspect, right? We've heard from teens that they are actually missing conversation, meaningful conversation with adults. And so we want to provide opportunities for that. So for our programming, we put all of our programs online. And um, I want to do a tour of our website with you now so that you see the range of resources we offer during COVID-19 because they're both resources for teens and adults and for parents. And when I show you uh, all of the resources, they are all available to anybody in this community. So uh, whether you are a person struggling with mental health issues or substance use or not, or whether you are a loved one, it doesn't matter, you get to access these resources. So all of these resources are designed to improve resilience. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how that looks like. I'm gonna do a tour of our website so that you can see how you can access it, okay?
So this is actually a special invitation I want to invite all of you to. So we were part of a very acclaimed European documentary that opened in German movie theaters this spring and that also was just shown on German and on France, a French television uh, just this month. Uh, it is a documentary on alcohol and how the alcohol industry is really um, kind of abusing human vulnerabilities uh, for profit. Uh, it is a very important documentary because uh, the filmmaker in Germany is very famous. He's using controversial issues and then and topics, and then he's really presenting them in a very non-judgmental way to really invite dialogue. And so in that way, this film was very important. So they filmed around the world and they were also looking for approaches for healthy alternatives. And they came all the way to the US to Boulder to film Natural High. So we are part of this documentary and we are very proud of that. And so uh, we just did the US premiere showing of the film just last week. And it was so over full, like the Zoom uh, situation closed down, people couldn't get in. So we will host a second showing and you all are welcome to be part of it. It will be virtual on Zoom and it will have a discussion afterwards. It's going to be on Thursday, June 4th. And Harvey Milkman, who is very famous and is the initiator of the Iceland model, which has been an incredibly uh, successful approach in reducing uh, drinking substance abuse in teens from 42% to under 5% uh, countrywide within the span of 10 years, which is now rep replicated in over 20 countries. So he will be part of that conversation because he's also part of the film and he's a very close mentor of us. So please take this as my personal uh, invitation. You can participate in that. You can invite loved ones, um, or you can send the invitation to people who you think might benefit from that. So then when you scroll down on our website, you can see here that the resources are offered for teens, for parents, and for adults. So when you click into the, let's do the adult section because we saw so much now on teens. So let's go into the adult section. When you go into the adult uh, section of the website, if you click on the link, you can see here uh, it, where it says Natural Highs Online Academy. So everybody can be part of the Natural Highs Online Academy. And what it is, is that you get uh, every morning in your inbox, you get a free resilience and emotional care packet. Uh, so it contains uh, inspirational material, like a video or a practice or a worksheet. Uh, so the idea is really to have a resource, to have a positive focus during COVID-19 to strengthen people's mental health and people's resilience. So uh, they're both appropriate for kids, for teens, and for adults. So really anybody can sign up with their email. So if you have a loved one right now where you feel like, you know, they could use some inspiration, like maybe somebody who's in a nursing home who cannot have visits, and you think they would benefit from every morning having this beautiful little care packet, please sign them up with their email and then they can receive that. So that's one part of our current COVID program. And then we also offer all of the resources in our program for free right now. So when people cannot come to classes right now, we have all of our classes on video that people can look at now and can download. We also have a lot of our practices that we do in Natural Highs, typically in a, in a classroom. We recorded a bunch of those practices and people can download them for free on our website. So these are practices that help with stress, with anxiety, with anger, with trauma. So people can get them for free, including every one of you. And then there is podcasts, there's a TV show, there's lots of information. Uh, there is book lists and TED Talks. So you can see we went to create a hub uh, for people to get lots and lots of inspiration and resources. 
Uh, we have the same for parents. You can see that on the homepage, uh, a hub for parents, and we also have a hub for teens. So just because of time, I'm going to want to get back to you right now. Uh, but this is the plan for the summer. The plan for the summer is we want to keep going with our full support uh, programming right now for COVID. So all of the online supports. And then in addition, we do almost daily Zoom meetings for teens. And we also want to add intergenerational ones. So one of the ones that we want to invite all of you to is we do philosophy circles. And we have done over the years uh, intergenerational philosophy, philosophy circles. So that's one that I want to invite you all uh, to participate in because it's very amazing for people to have dialogue between young people and adults. So I want to pause here because I want to have time for conversation. So feel free to bring your questions. Thank you, Avani. That's wonderful. And we do have a, a lot of questions. Uh, let me start with uh, Peter Ewing. Peter? Uh, yes, Ivani, thank you for this presentation. Uh, your last portion of it actually dealt with a lot of what my question was pointed at, because originally you were talking about, and, and it appeared uh, solely teens and especially young women, uh, but the question was, is this program equally effective and useful for adults as well as long-term uh, addiction, alcohol, drugs, et cetera. I mean, 20, 30 year uh, kind of history. Yeah. What is your experience with that, with those, yeah. that group? Yeah, so that is actually my background, right? So when I worked here for Boulder County Public Health and when I worked here in the Boulder County Jail, we worked with people on the most extreme end of the spectrum, right? So all of Natural Highs was born out of experience with people on the really most extreme end of the spectrum with mental health issues and addiction issues. And the class that Holly and I are teaching right now for women on probation, we have people in the class who are in their 50s who have been dealing for decades of utter destruction with substance abuse and mental health issues, right? So uh, we teach it exactly the same way. We teach it foundational on neuroscience and on coping skills on what can I learn about my own brain to help myself find healthy alternatives. Instead of using drugs to cope, how can I cope in a healthy way? So yes, our program has been very successful with people who are on the more extreme end of the spectrum. Uh, we are also working with treatment centers. So for example, we work with a treatment center in Estes Park called Fire Mountain, uh, who works with young people on the very severe end of the spectrum who are residential, right? Who stay there for about six to nine months in residential treatment for very severe issues. And we teach natural highs there. Um, so the reason we do more for teens is just time, right? We are so busy uh, because there's so much need in the community. We would love to offer many, many, many more uh, programming for adults. Uh, so I teach typically one adult class per semester at Naropa University that's open to all adults, all ages in the community. If I would have more time, if we would have more resources, we would love to offer more for adults because we know adults need it the same way, you know? The reason is we just want to catch kids early, right? We want to save them from uh, so many uh, from from so many years of destruction. We want to turn lives around early on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, our next questioner is John John Sullivan. Thank you, Gary. Uh, my questions for Dee and Kara and Holly. Um, you mentioned that uh, before Natural Highs, you were involved with peer groups that were leading you down the wrong path, and I wanted to know if you still interact with these peer groups today, and if yes, how do you approach this interaction? And if you don't interact, why not? Good question. Okay, I can start if no one minds. Uh, the friendships that I had at the time, I don't specifically interact with those certain people because 
there were just like interpersonal struggles as well. We just dissolved the friendship. Um, but in general, I do interact with people who um, make quote unquote questionable choices or specifically with drug use. Um, because at my last school, for example, New Vista, it's in Boulder, so everyone's smoking weed. And I have, I have plenty of friends who, who do drugs and stuff like that. Um, People, for the most part, are very respectful of my decisions. I find that I've been at parties where everyone is high or drunk and they ask, and like someone is trying to send a text to their mom and they're like, is anyone sober here? And everyone's like, no. And I'm like, oh, I'm sober. And I'll send the text for them. And they'll be like, oh my God, that's so cool that you're sober, D. Cause like, I know you're part of natural highs. And like, I want to be like you one day and just like stuff like that. Like I get that a lot. Um, and I don't know. I think that there, because natural highs is so about um, substitution instead of just like taking something away and just like, okay, have fun with the withdrawals, um, is so important. For example, with herbalism specifically, um, like the way that we use herbs, um, like specifically passion flower for anxiety or um, like reishi for more of a connection to the world and like feeling brighter and more awake. Um, it's very, very, like that portion of it is just so insanely specific and so important. Um, I've also definitely been at gatherings where people are smoking weed and I will just be like drinking mate um, and everyone's pretty cool with it for the most part and I even find that people who I would have never expected to like ever consider being sober just tell me that although they're not willing to make the switch they find the fact that I'm doing that super inspiring. Yeah, and like, um, I can kind of bounce off that with, with my experience. Um, I was like, I'm in college, I go to CU, so I, and I was like, in a, or I still am in a sorority, so it was a very big culture around like, going out to parties, drinking, and it was my whole identity before getting sober, which was really hard when I first came into natural highs, like letting go of that past self. Um, and I still, I still have all my relationships, and my friends know that I love them, but I've noticed that I, the distance between us has just grown because I've grown and like the things that I've learned through natural highs and like the things I've learned about myself just don't really correlate with some of the things that my friends are doing. Um, so I've noticed that I can still love them from afar and like be a role model and give like positive influence to them, but I'm not necessarily spending all my time doing the same things that I used to be doing. Um, and I actually, it's been really cool because a lot of my friends have been inspired to get sober because of the work that I've been doing. So two of my closest friends are um, completely sober, one of them for a month and the other one for like three or four now, which is really beautiful. And like, all we can really hope is like, I can't, I can only control what I'm doing in my world. And I'm still a part, I still go to see you. Like I still have all my friends, you know, like I don't want to isolate myself and be totally lonely, but I just show up as I am and show up as a role model and allow people to also do the same if that's something that they want to do for themselves. Thank you, Ali. Okay, so we have another question from uh, Deborah Simmons. Deborah. Hi, um, I just, I am relating to you, Ivani, and to you girls on so many levels. It's hard for me to know where to start or actually what not to say. Um, I'm in recovery. My son went through four uh, residential treatment programs for opiate addiction. I started the reentry initiative here in um, Boulder County to help women reenter from incarceration. And I, I understand the value of what you're doing. I'm so excited to hear from you and to learn about what you're doing. I think we have some amazing opportunities where our women who are living in our home in Longmont who have long battled addiction and its ramifications and consequences, I think there could be some enormous potential here for us to be able to um, benefit our mutual communities. And I really look forward to contacting you after this meeting. So I need to say something that just moved me so much. And uh, you know, oftentimes when people see our community work, and by the way, there was a question, how many people we serve? We serve over 2000 kids a year here in this area. And we also have pilot sites because people like Kara, we had a young person bring natural highs to Australia and she worked there with Aboriginal youth. We are still connected with them. Uh, so we have pilot sites where young leaders then take natural highs and bring it to other places. It's also now being implemented in several schools in Denver. 
uh, at the Colorado High School and at Gals, Gals, who is the Girls Athletic Leadership School in Denver. So, you know, when people see our work in the community, sometimes they think, oh, you know, this is prevention. How would this work for people who are hardcore in addiction? And then I, I just smile. It's like we don't separate people at all. We think we invite everybody on the whole spectrum. I tell you, we have people who have been through all these treatment centers and nothing has ever worked for them. And natural highs is the first approach that works for them because it is different. So I want to share with you. So I have been invited for that. I've worked with the Boulder Probation Department for the last 12 years. And so I get invited to do one time presentations, right, for drug court, for probation. And these clients, you know how these clients present sometimes initially, right? They've learned to put up the facade. They have learned to be very defensive. And literally it takes us one presentation to change that. I wanna personally forward you a, an email that I got from a probation officer who speaks about what Natural Highs has done for her client. She couldn't believe it. Like she had given up hope that anything would work for this client. And it took us one class to completely <laughs> change the behavior of this client because we, we approach people differently. We approach people as experts, as leaders, without any judgment. We say to everybody, you can teach something. So right now in the class, we have a woman on the team as a mentor who lost her children. Her children were taken away from her because of drug use. She was incarcerated. Now she's on the team, right? So you can imagine the other women come to class and they're like, Morgan, why are you on the team? Like, what does that mean? Well, she's a peer mentor. She is clean and sober. It changes um, everything in an instant, right? Thank you. Uh, and I'm glad you guys are gonna connect afterwards. But we've, uh, I'm afraid we've reached our time limit here. We have lots more questions and I would encourage people if they want to stay on after uh, we close the program and Ivani can stay on for a little bit and we, we can get some more of your questions answered. I also but, want to say, right, my email is on the website and it's naturalhighs.org with an S. There's another organization in California uh, without an S, naturalhigh.org. They named their program after us. Uh, but uh, so just know, get, get on the right website, naturalhighs.org. My email is right there. Please reach out. This is what we are about. We are about community. We are about connection. We invite every one of you to connect with us and, and take advantage of all the resources we're offering right now. We'd love for you to be part of our community. Please think about the vulnerable people in your lives. Please connect them with our resources. It's all about community. It's all about inspiration. And we would love to extend that to all of you. Thank you so much, Ivani. Uh, the, uh, I, I want to first thank you and all of the peer mentors for being here today and being... Yeah, just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight. Uh, all that you have, it's been very inspirational.
yeah just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight